when I say the phrase commentary channels, what comes to your mind? As someone who has regrettably been invested in the genre since Zaptai was a prominent figure, I look back at the evolution of the community as having two specific periods. The first period of commentary was the time when the community was filled with people who added absolutely nothing to the genre and pumped out 10 plus minute content restating the exact same thing over and over again on tired and rehashed subjects that nobody should actually care about. Although there were some genuinely interesting and innovative creators in this time, such as Colossal is Crazy, Zabtai, and Mama Max, the majority of people were wave-riding weirdos who had no comedic talent whatsoever. Alas, this all changed, and the second period was introduced, when a creator started making videos on the platform that took commentary videos in a completely new and different direction. And his name is Cody Ko. So I want to take you back to the fall of 2016, when a little something hit YouTube that was appropriately titled The Viner Invasion. It was a hotbed topic among people who had called YouTube their home, and they were infuriated with the fact that they were going to have to share it with people like the Paul brothers, Lele Pons, and King Botch. Many creators such as H3H3, Pyrocynical, and PewDiePie made videos about how detrimental these types of creators were to the platform, and essentially made it seem like anyone migrating over from Vine was the other and not to be welcomed. Also, really quick side note, would you guys like to see an H3H3 video? Because while watching his video as research for this video, I came to the realization that Ethan is much less funny than I remembered him being. I mean, seriously, this video on the Viner invasion, the crux of his jokes are, haha, funny man do cough, and dab is signal. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want a video on him. Anyways, around the same time, Cody co-uploaded his first commentary video available on his channel called Frick This Guy, which became the series that kind of kickstarted his venture into the commentary sector of YouTube. In said videos, he would expose and discuss people who were being scummy in one way or another, while most of the other figures in the commentary genre were talking about MTV's resolutions for white guys, because of course they were. Now, this kind of gets into the first reason how I think Cody broke YouTube. And don't worry, we'll get to Noel soon. When looking into commentary at the time, it was more of a vitriolic cesspool of hatred against people's opinions, with BuzzFeed being the most common target of them all. People didn't seem to get mad over heinous things that were happening on the internet, they just seemed to get mad because there were other people or entities out there that didn't share the same opinions as them. The videos that were being made were unstructured, repetitive, and incredibly stale. In contrast, I feel like Cody completely altered the path of how commentary is currently approached by making more insightful content on things that can have a negative effect on people who actively watch the content. Also, it definitely didn't hurt that he had come from an actual background of doing stand-up comedy, which helped with his ability to craft more intellectual jokes and pace and structure his comedy, as opposed to just being a randy in their basement with no experience or nuance to their style whatsoever. And when you think about the people who fit into that mold that came after Cody, you start to think about the major players in commentary today, such as Danny Gonzalez, Drew Gooden, Curtis Connor, Eddie Burback, Michael Persaud, and Scott Kramer. Now, do not get me wrong. Every single one of these creators are fantastic and unique with their specific comedy styles, enough so to make their own brand identifiable with each person. But aside from Eddie and Scott, these are all people who have come from Vine, and it is a reality that Cody was a pioneer at the trail that they all embarked on. So in my personal opinion, there is a very high chance that we would not have had this shift from base level to more entertaining commentary if it wasn't for him. However, although the commentary aspect is important, that isn't really how he broke YouTube. And we haven't even brought in Noel yet. So as you can probably imagine, now is the time I would like to bring TMG into the fold. 
in a video about the now infamous banger, It's Every Day Bro, Cody harps on the fact that Jake Paul and his cohorts keep bringing up the fact that the song was made and the music video was shot in a day. And that isn't even that impressive of a feat. So in order to take the piss out of him even more, he decides to make his own song with his good friend Noel Miller in a day in order to show how easy it is for that to occur. In less than two weeks, an official video was up on his channel with the artist title reading Tiny Meat Gang. Now, we didn't know this at the time, but this would be the start of a meteoric rise to prominence for both Cody and Noel, as when most people listened to the track, they came to the strange realization that the song, although a complete joke, was very raw and surprisingly actually kind of good. They became rather impressed with Noel's ability specifically, and the duo quickly saw an avenue to make a career in something other than YouTube, and more importantly, just have fun. That same year, they released an EP titled Bangers and Ass that was in the vein of a comedy album, something along the lines of Filthy Frank. However, there were still a couple of things that differentiated them from most rappers coming from YouTube at the time. Firstly, the production on the tracks was so much better than normal, thanks to Diamond Pistols. Also, the technicality in the rapping, especially from Noel, was actually pretty impressive, with him using multisyllabic rhymes a good amount of the time. So, even though the songs were clearly jokes, there was still an amount of untapped potential there. And that potential would be explored even more with the mixtape they released the following year entitled Locals Only. Although comedy was still a big part of the group's persona, it was clear to see that the ante had definitely been upped. Cody seemed to actually be taking the group seriously, or he got exponentially better in a very short period of time because it seemed like he finally sounded comfortable on how to ride the beats and dug out a unique cadence for himself, which was honestly wonderful to hear, especially on the choruses. Noel also increased his ability to the point where he sounded like an actual rapper, officially inserting him into heartthrob status to many women and men on the internet. They also included Spock on a lot of the beats for the project, giving the production an even grimier feel to it, which made the contrast of a hard trap beat and some pretty goofy lyrics even more intriguing. Keep in mind, these are just two guys off of Vine and in the commentary community that are blowing the lid off of the expectations that are often had about YouTube music. And they haven't even started to make songs that weren't comedy yet. Another factor that must be talked about in regards to these two busting the platform wide open is the Tiny Meat Tour, a venture that Cody and Noel took on for 2019 where they took some comedy acts on the road and performed them nationwide to actual sold out crowds. In 2019, somebody that I made a previous video about, KSI, who has about four times the audience of the group combined, couldn't even fill up half of a crowd at his events. So that just shows you how insane and intense the fan base for these two were. In fact, seeing how other popular figures on YouTube such as Jake Paul, the Dobry Brothers, and James Charles have had absolutely dead and half-filled audiences, while every single TMG show is completely popping off, shows something that is kind of an anomaly on the platform, and that is hard work and talent seem to actually be paying off for these two. The reason I find this so important is that this kind of changes the landscape of how branching off from YouTube works as a whole. From the sample size we have been given, being talented and charismatic in the skill you are touring for seems to be paying off dividends. So if you are someone with 1 million subscribers and you're very good at what you do, it is more likely that you will have a fan base that will come out to support you and provide recognition as opposed to someone with 4 million subscribers that is just doing it for a revenue stream. Anyways, back to TMG. Although I had listened to them pretty consistently since they started putting stuff out, I only started taking them seriously starting in the summer of 2019 when the song Walkman was released. From what I've observed, this was the tipping point where the group officially transitioned from comedy music to actual listenable music. Although there was a bit of a comedic tone to it, it was minuscule compared to the amount they included when they started in 2017. An overtone turned to undertone, if you would. Later on that year, they managed to land a guest spot from Black Bear, which was wild when I saw it considering I've been following Black Bear since he was Matt Musto. Then finally, in 2020, they released a single named Broke Bitch. And this bro, this was the one. 
There was absolutely no comedy to this song at all, and it was an absolute banger with genuinely decent bars. Both members sounded like they had entered the zone, and not only rode the beat, they controlled it, which is a skill that not many rappers have in the first place. And I know I already said this, but Cody officially masters the art of the chorus here. The way that he maneuvers his vocal tonality to match the beat is one of the most disgusting things I've heard all year. So unlike in the KSI video where I said that his new music sounds like an actual artist, TMG has finally entered the realm of music where they not only sound like real artists, but the songs they put out sound like music I would actually go out of my way to listen to. So why did this need to be made? Well, as is the reason I make most of my videos, I feel like they need more recognition for pioneering a new path that many people took advantage of. Right after the summer TMG tour ended, Drew, Danny, and Curtis embarked on a very similar interactive comedy tour. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, as I very much enjoy all of the aforementioned names and their content, but who would have thought that commentary channels would have been able to sell out tours, and would companies really have invested in other ventures if the TMG one had not been so successful? And would the reputation of YouTuber music be moving in a slightly more positive direction if it weren't for Cody and Noel putting out really solid tracks, whether they're comedy or not? I genuinely don't think so. So yeah, thank you for the effort, TMG. And everyone remember, keep your dick fat. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is a video I've wanted to make for a while and I hope I did TMG well. If you enjoyed, you can like, comment, and subscribe if you feel compelled. And if you feel super compelled, you can follow us on Twitter and support us on Patreon. Thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.